Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe for better snacks next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building L from Death Note, the expert investigator in charge of finding Kira, and an excellent chair sitter. Imagine sitting in a chair, pretending to be a character, sitting in a chair. Riveting. Let's go down to the tennis court and talk it up like yeah. yeah. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to be a detective with an internal monologue running parallel to the killer's monologue while you eat dinner. Only Kira would order a dessert before the entree. But if he knows you know that, ordering dessert first is the only way to prove he's not Kira. Meals with Elle and Light take 10 hours because they never order anything. Next, we need surveillance. That way we don't have to leave our room to do detective things. Finally, we need to befriend the enemy, or at least the guy you're pretty sure is the enemy, like 90% sure. For stats, we'll be using the standard point buy. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma, all up at 14. Those are the best stats for finding clues and cracking cases. Dexterity at 13, even if you're not all that physical, you can still bob and weave if you have to. Constitution's a bit low at 9, since all of the calories from your snacks just go right to your brain, it's kind of hard to put on mass. Speaking of, strength goes down to 8, but don't worry, I do have a contingency for tennis. L is a human. Humans can be very observant, with a feat called observant. That gives you plus 1 intelligence, plus 5 to your passive perception and investigation skills and lets you read lips. That means you can solve crimes by just like walking into a room. Bump your intelligence and constitution with your two free points, take history for your skill of choice, and build your own background for deception and intimidation. I don't really care where we get skills from, we just need a lot of skills. Rogues get a lot of skills, like investigation, insight, perception, and persuasion, all of which will be useful to crack the case. Investigation and insight especially, so why don't we double your proficiency bonus with those checks using expertise. You also get sneak attack, letting you add an extra d6 of damage to one attack per turn using a finesse or a ranged weapon when you have an ally within five feet of the target, but we're here for skills. You're not really going to attack, just figure out who the killer is and send everyone else in after them. Some people might think, wouldn't a character who doesn't fight be useless in a combat-focused campaign? No, it just means L gets to do everything else and the rest of the party can focus on hitting. Second level rogues are great at pursuit, with cunning action to dash, disengage, or hide as a bonus action, just don't trip if you're running on a table. Netflix reference. That sucked. Third level rogues get better at investigating as an inquisitive. That gives you an ear for deceit, meaning the lowest you can roll on an insight check to determine a lie is an 8, plus your modifiers. It's like the 11th level ability, reliable talent, but way, way earlier. Your eye for detail lets you make an investigation or perception check as a bonus action. Your passive checks are pretty amazing already, but this will let you get really specific if you need to. Finally, insightful fighting lets you get your sneak attack against a creature by making an insight check against that creature's deception check. If you succeed, you can just sneak attack them all you want, once per turn, still, of course. 2d6 now as well. Fourth level rogues get an ability score improvement. Let's bump your wisdom to be on par with your intelligence since those are the chief investigation skills. Fifth level rogues get uncanny dodge, letting you reduce the damage of an incoming attack by half as a reaction as long as you can see the source of damage. Obviously, you knew how that attack was going to come in, so you let it glance you. Then you can get your 3d6 sneak attack damage off. Sixth level rogues get expertise in two more skills like perception and deception, helping you find clues without looking and to deceive the deceivers. At this point, your passive investigation and perception are both 24 which is pretty bananas. Seventh level rogues get evasion, letting you take half damage from a failed dexterity save and no damage from a successful one. We'll actually not be investing in dexterity as much, but it's not like having your name in the death note hits you with a fireball anyway. You also get 4d6 sneak attack damage here. Eighth level rogues get another ability score improvement, bump your intelligence again for a plus four modifier. We're just going to kind of bounce back and forth between this and wisdom. Ninth level inquisitive rogues get steady eye, giving you advantage on perception and investigation checks if you haven't moved more than half your movement speed in any given turn. Considering we play the end of this build sitting in a chair doing our checks, I think it's safe to say that's permanent advantage. It's also permanent 5d6 sneak attack damage. 10th level rogues get another ability score improvement, bump your wisdom to get it on par with your intelligence, and have just about the most consistent checks you can have, until you hit the 11th level of row for reliable talent, setting the minimum you can roll with your skill checks at 10, followed by your modifiers. Now if only we had more skills. Well, if we jump over to bar, we can grab another skill, like medicine. If you can determine the cause of death, you get a better read on the killer's intention. Lots of heart attacks, maybe Maybe they hate hearts? We're actually here for spells and cantrips, believe it or not, like friends, giving you advantage on charisma checks with a creature for a minute before they realize that you're actually the one investigating them. Message lets you whisper to a creature within 120 feet of you, sending a sly text message to one of your fellow agents. Charm person lets you charm a humanoid that fails a wisdom saving throw for an hour, giving you a little more time to get some information than the friend spell would give you. Silvery barbs gives a creature disadvantage on a skill check, attack roll, or saving throw, and gives a creature within 30 feet of you advantage on a 
skill check, attack roll, or saving throw as a result of that, letting you say something to really throw light off this game. Identify tells you what a magical item is and how many charges it has left, though there isn't a lot of magic in the world. Certainly no magical murder diaries. Bane forces a charisma saving throw on up to three creatures, giving those that fail a d4 penalty to attack rolls and saving throws, which will be much more helpful later. You also get bardic inspiration to help your fellow investigators with a pool of d6s equal to your charisma modifier that you can give to allies to add to an ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. Maybe you could get your allies to do a little research for you. Or shooting. You don't really shoot much. Second level bards get a song of rest, letting your allies recover an extra d6 on short rests, which is weird. L does not seem like he gets that much sleep. Probably because he doesn't need long rests. Never mind, this makes perfect sense. You also get jack of all trades, letting you add half your proficiency bonus to any skill check you're not proficient with, even if you have a ton and are probably just going to get more. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. You will. Third level bards get expertise in two more skills, like persuasion and medicine, for six expertise skills and reliable talent. Absolutely bananas outside of combat. Enhance ability can push that even further, giving you advantage on skill checks of a certain type. If you choose strength, your carrying capacity is doubled. Dexterity makes you immune to falling damage from heights of 20 feet or less, and constitution gives you 2d6 temporary HP. I'd just use it to push your perception, investigation, or insight higher. Remember, advantage on a check gives you plus five to the passive checks as well, so your passive investigation and perception could be impassably hot. This is also the level you can choose a college and your weird whammy house probably got you really into lore. As a lore bard, you get proficiency with three more skills like religion, survival, and athletics. Told you I had a contingency for tennis. Your minimum athletics check is now a 14. Not all that great, but not all that bad, especially as a floor. You also get cutting words letting you subtract your bardic inspiration die from a creature's attack roll, ability check, or damage roll. Another way to give yourself protection from some weasley little dudes. Fourth level bards get another ability score improvement off your wisdom modifier first since you have other powers that use your insight skill whereas your intelligence skills are just useful as skills still useful just not quite as special fifth level bards get a font of inspiration letting you recover your inspiration die on short rests and they bump up to a d8 making you more potent with your unsettling words you also get third level spells so we can get our first piece of surveillance with clairvoyance that creates an invisible security camera that you can see or hear through for 10 minutes at a time now you can see what light is going to do with that potato chip okay takes the potato chip and he eats it six level lore bards get additional magical secrets to spells from any list like find familiar which creates a small animal you can cast touch range spells through the most important part though is that you can see through its senses so now you have a security camera that can move and be killed really fast but who would kill a bird are you gonna write bird in the death note calm emotions forces a charisma saving throw on humanoids removing an effect of charming or frightening and making them non-hostile if they fail you need to get light on your side if you're gonna figure out how he's doing all those heart attack murders. Seventh level bards get fourth level spells like locate creature, letting you know where a specific creature is or a type of creature, but it has to be like humanoid type of creature, not just murderer. So you can find light if you're looking for light specifically, but you can't cast locate creature and say creature is Kira to instantly know who that is. Eighth level bards get our last ability score improvement, meaning you can cap off your intelligence score as well, making you perhaps the most consistent detective we've ever built with a reliable talent. We'll talk about that in a second. First, we need our capstone, a ninth level of bard for fifth level spells. Scrying lets you do some spying on a creature you're aware of that's on the same plane of existence as you. You can watch them for 10 minutes if they fail a wisdom saving throw, and the save is modified depending on how well you know them. If you've only heard of them, they get a plus five to their save. If you're good friends with them, they have a negative five to their saving throw. You can also give them a negative two penalty to their save if you have a picture of them, a negative five to their save if you have a piece of their clothing, or a negative 10 to their saving throw if you have a piece of their hair or a fingernail. That's a little creepy, but it is DNA evidence. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, let's talk about your skill checks. Your minimum athletics is 15. Intimidation is 18. Survival, religion, and history are 21. Persuasion and deception are 24. Insight, investigation, perception, and medicine are 27. Not to mention passive perception and investigation at 32. Nobody can sneak up on you unless they roll a 32 stealth check. You also have surveillance abilities to spy on your enemies without leaving the house. Finally, you can demoralize enemies with cutting words and silvery barbs to make you the Skilla Gorilla who comes out on top. For weaknesses, you don't deal damage, like at all. Even with sneak attack, your dexterity is only plus one, so you're going to miss attacks with finesse and ranged weapons. Your HP is also very low, somewhere around 100 depending on how you rolled, meaning power word kill could be an issue, especially in your line of work. Finally, you are a bard rogue multi-class who hard-focused wisdom and intelligence, meaning you're not really good at the things your class is supposed to do. That's why you're kind of your own class the skill class. And
and you'll use your skills to find the villains, solve the roleplay challenges, and point the rest of the party at the villains to do the damage. Maybe just make sure you call your shot early, otherwise a killer could end up with a big W over L. Thanks for watching, if you liked the video, subscribe for more, we make two videos every week. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.